Dan Tortora stage with none other, none other than Mark Dodson, the voice of Salacious Crumb, someone who lent their voice to Star Wars The Force Awakens, the Gremlins, you know many of them, including the Daffy Gremlin. As well. <laughs> Give us, give us a little bit of salacious for today. Uh, <laughs> so Mark Dodson is here with us today. He is signing autographs. He's here throughout the con. We're very happy to have him here from St. Louis. And Mark, you and I, I mean, we've talked about so many things. We're going to go out of the box a little bit here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you. Go, oh, good. We're going a little bit out of the box here. So from your perspective, I mean, everybody talks to you about the voices that you do. But... Star Wars The Force Awakens, when you got to see it and enjoy it from sitting there and, and watching in the theater, what did you take away from it? Were you a fan coming out of it? How did you watch the movie? Because I know you try to separate yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I love the new movie. Um, you know, we finally got back to the, the old school, and I thought it was great. Uh, I loved was shocked. I don't want to say that. I'm sure there's people that haven't seen it. There were some things that even being somebody who worked on the film that I didn't expect at all. And um, and I love how it ends because it was like the greatest once again, you know, one of the great, a great cliffhanger, literally. Yeah. They leave you on a cliff and um, I thought it set up the next film really well. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. And you had an opportunity to lend your voice to The Force Awakens, but what a lot of people don't know from watching it at face value, as much as you are characters within that, there's stories behind the characters. You give them life. So I want to go into that scene where the two brothers are playing that game where you lent your voice that sounded a little bit like Salacious. And to give a backstory on those characters and who they were, because they're, every character, even the ones that are there for a second, they have a place in Star Wars, in, in the world of Star Wars. Yeah, that's what's fun, is, is all, like even Salacious Crumb, you know, people know him as the little guy with Jabba that cackles. <laughs> And um, but he has his story. He's a Kowakian monkey lizard. Uh, he's a sadistic little animal. He lo he loves to see people get hurt. So then I kind of added to it. So probably his favorite actors would be Mo, Larry, and Curly. You know, he would think they were like Shakespearean actors. Um, but uh, yeah, so so all the characters in Star Wars have a backstory, even if they're there for a second. So Cretinus is a new character that I did, and they wanted a laugh because when they first walk into Maz Kanata's castle, um, Cretinus and his brother Prashi are playing a board game, and Cretinus wins the game and goes, <laughs> and that's me, and. The fun thing was when we were doing the session, we're doing it to picture, and Matt Wood was directing, the supervising sound editor. And when that scene came up, we watch it, and then he looked over at me and said, Salacious, I need your laugh. So it's kind of cool to be called Salacious, because I kind of, when it comes to Star Wars and all this kind of stuff, I'm not me, I'm Salacious, you know. Um, so, but the backstory on Cretinus, besides the laugh, is that he, he and his brother, Prashi, are swindlers. And they hang out there at Maz's and drink and play board games. They love a uh, game of chance. Um, they are identical twins. So they use the fact that they look completely alike in their swindles. You know, I guess they would, we would do something and walk away and the other one would come in and go, well, I didn't agree to that, you know, or something like that. But, um, so that's basically the, the backstory on them. And, uh, I don't know, Han's kind of a swindler, isn't he? So I kind of feel like, like we're kind of brothers that way, you know. But, yeah, so that's me. Now, I know that just a little while ago, and, and she came up to the stage, there was a young, salacious crumb in the building today that I think came over and got to meet you. Addie. Yeah. That's Addie. There she is. So Hi, what, Addie. What did you think about seeing, <laughs> seeing salacious here? Oh, I think she's great. Wow, that, uh, she's the cutest salacious I've ever seen. 
Yeah. Is, is she cuter than the one that they put in the film? Yeah. She fit that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll give her the credit here. Yes. So hope she hope she does well in today's cosplay. Yes. But I, I want to go to you. Those ears are perfect. They're we, perfect. Have you seen a costume better than that for never. Salacious? Not for Salacious. No, really, I've never have. That's the best Salacious I've seen. Very, very nice. And you know what? She's about exactly the size of the real Salacious. That's a, yeah. They could have saved. They could have saved a lot of money trying to put have. it in there. Just yeah. cast it right and, there. And she could have done the voice too, because she did the voice for me. <laughs> oh, she did the voice yeah. for you. Yeah. So, do you still have a job as of right now? Probably not. Okay. All right. <laughs> but speaking, you know, that, there's a there's a thing they say in the, in the voiceover world. There's a saying yeah. about the the uh, the career of a voice actor goes like this. I'm Mark Dodson, right? So, so it would go. The career of a voice actor is the director would say, "Who's Mark Dodson?" And then after we've done something, and they go, "Get me Mark Dodson." And then after we're wanting a little too much, it's, "Give me somebody that sounds like Mark Dodson." <laughs> so that's the that's our career. That's how it goes. And speaking like sounding like, you do a, a very, very good Haunted Mansion, you know, down at Walt Disney World, the ride. Many people have been on it. I've had people come up to me, and, and we know it's Paul Freeze. It's Paul Freeze, my favorite of all time, Paul Freeze. But sometimes you get credit for that because you and Paul, I mean, you sound like it. So there's I times where people will come up to me and say, well, does Mark Dodson do it? So. With inches creak and doorless chambers, and voices echo down the hall, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their ghoulish delight. <laughs> Welcome. Well, come in. Kindly step all the way in, please. I will be your host. <laughs> There's my Paul Freeze. I love Paul. But Paul, Paul, I mean, obviously. I go through, and oh, believe me, when I go to Disneyland, I go, he does all the, most all the pirates and pirates yeah. of the Caribbean, and I, that's all I ride. I go there and I ride the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean all day long. So, uh, after about the third time, I don't, none of my friends are with me anymore, but I'm digging it, so. Now, but you took some inspiration from people like Paul Freeze, right? Yeah, we get all our inspiration. I mean, you know, yeah, I still, uh, at Halloween, or before, a couple months before Halloween, I do a lot of the uh, haunt, like I do Knott's Berry Farms, it becomes Knott's Scary Farm, and you know, all those. And so every morning in September, there, you can go to YouTube and hear Paul Freeze doing a portion of the Haunted Match and, the, and some of the outtakes, too. They're really cool. Every morning in September, I wake up and listen to Paul Freeze over and over and get in the mood. And then I'll put on some, you know, uh, Tales from the Crypt music and, and get in the mood. And then I start doing all the voices for those things, you know. But, yeah, yeah, it's great inspiration. And you and I have talked about this uh, on Large in the Life on the show before, that you're not, obviously, you're nowhere near being done. You have some things that you would like to do, some experiences you would like to have. So for the people that appreciate Gremlins and Salacious Crumb, and for me, a, a Darkwing Duck fan that appreciated that you lent your voice to one of those and Bonkers as well, what would you like to do as, as you move forward? Because you have such a vast library of ability of voices to do, but there's some things that I, I remember I asked you if you could do anything, and you said, well, I got it. It's this. So share with everybody what that is. It's real simple. My big dream now, uh, I still have dreams, so I'm still around. My big dream now is to work with Tim Burton. And I'd love to be in the new Beetlejuice, you know, to be voices for some of the ghosts and things. That's my big, that's my big goal right now. So everybody write to Tim Burton and tell him they need to use Mark Dodson for, for the new Beetlejuice. I can't wait for the new Beetlejuice either. I love Beetlejuice. I know that Gremlins 3 is happening and they're in production. So there's a hope, there's a hope there for you with that. 
but Star Wars as it goes on. I know you and I have talked about if you were to give anything concrete, then you would disappear as, as you sit here right now. Your clothes would be left, but Disney would whisk you away somewhere. <laughs> oh, if I say anything, yeah. yeah. But are you hopeful that you'll still be a part of Star Wars as you move forward? I'm hopeful. That's all I can say. <laughs> We want to open it up to the fans, though. If anybody has a question, just raise your hand, and we're going to bring a, mo a mic over to you if you have a question for Mark. So if anybody has a question for Mark, we're going to give the mic out now. Hi, Addy. favorite? Salacious Crumb. He's my favorite. That's a great question. Yeah, Salacious. From Salacious to Salacious, do we have yes. any questions for Mark Dodson? Go ahead and raise your hand. You can feel free to ask him anything. This man has worked all over the country and has done amazing, amazing work. Long line of people met you this morning. Let me ask you about that while we have a minute here. If anybody has a question, raise their hand. But for you to come here to Syracuse, and if I'm correct. Syracuse. Sy yeah, we had the conversation <laughs> in the car. Syracuse. I know you, you want to say Syracuse. Yeah, we why. say Syracuse in yeah. the Midwest. It's Syracuse. Syracuse. I got yes. it. Cuse is in the house. Oh, my God. Cuse That's what you need to know. But. I like John Cusack. You like John Cusack, the so there you go, Cuse in the house, you can say that about him. But what do you think about Syracuse so far? You've had a pretty long line out there. They've shown some love to Mark Dodson today. I'm loving it. Yeah, everybody's been very nice. Very, See very Ray nice. and BB-8 in the house today. BB-8? Yes. And we got the Mandalorian Mercs, and we got the 501st. Yeah. Yeah. I'm loving it. What do you, you know? And that you, always feels really good when we do these. It's like when I walk in and see the 501st and the Mercs, and you guys know the 501st are the stormtroopers walking around. It's like I know I'm home, and I know I've got, you know, they're there for you. They've got your back. So, yeah. Syracuse is beautiful, but it's cold today. It was 72 it's like, days ago. I know. So. You guys, I guess you have weather like St. Louis. Yeah, because we were like in the 80s, and then chilly and rainy. Selena so, or? Salina. Uh, Salina, Kansas? No, we have a Salina Street. Oh, yeah. Usually out of counter say Selena. It usually what? Say Selena. Selena. I would probably say, if I was reading it, I think Salina. Is it S A L I N? Then, according to my English teacher, the I becomes a long I because the A, there's only one letter between it, so it's Salina. <laughs> that was a great question. Like that was that. a great question. Thanks. It's a Syracuse question. I'm the feeling Syracuse. that. So, Mark, be, before I let you go here, I, I think one of the biggest things that you can do is be an inspiration, which you have been to many people. So for people that have that adversity or being told, you know, get a real job, you hear, get a nine to five job and whatnot, you have lived a life that you didn't expect to live when you started it out. What can you say to people that have those dreams and aspirations, whatever they may be, to continue to follow them like you have? Well, I'd say first, get a real job. <laughs> To, to, but but what you have to do, you got to be willing to work while you're going for your dream. You know, it's basically you're gonna when you start out, you, you're gonna have two jobs. You're gonna have your job that's paying your bills. That's how I did it. That's how we did it back in the old days. Yeah. You know, um, and then you and then you go for your dreams, man, and and uh, keep going for it. And you know, if it's a passion, then. When you're done 
working, that should give you energy. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm like I would be tired at the end of the day of working, but then when it was time to audition or do something, there's all that energy again because it's what I love. It's my passion. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the thing too. Is like I, I would say that to my wife. I would be sick. My throat would be hurting, sore throat, you know, strep throat or whatever. I'd go into the studio, turn the mic on. I felt a hundred percent healthy. As soon as I shut that mic off and got in my car, it all came back. That's true. You know? Yeah, that's very true. When yeah. you do what you love, but I, I think the only fair way to have you leave the stage should we do Mickey and Goofy? Oh sure. Should we do that? All right. So we'll just go from here then, I guess. Oh bye. Who's my pal? Hi, Whitley. Sure has been good here. I love being in Sy Syracuse. <laughs> sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Dodson. Let's give him a round of applause. This man is amazing. Mark Dodson continuing guys. to work hard. He will be right across from us at the entrance. Make sure you get an autograph, say hello, take a picture to one of the best people that I've met. Appreciate right, it, thank sir. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Talk you to you much. soon. Right on.